Periods make people uncomfortable. So much so that paradoxically, in the United States, we are obsessed with them. Tampons are taxed as luxuries, data from period tracking apps are sold to people's employers, and the government keeps an eye on the menstrual cycles of detained migrant children, misspelling menstrual all the while. I'm interested in why we surveil and control menstruation in the first place. To this end, my research offers a rhetorical history of menstrual containment in the US from the 1870s when doctors first started studying menstruation to the 1970s when activists struggled to reclaim expertise over their bodies. I analyze archival materials ranging from medical journal articles to books to menstrual product ads, tracing how the meaning of menstrual containment shifts over time. Here's what I've found. Menstrual containment has always been entangled with ideas about gender and race and whose menstrual health is considered valuable. Now, traditionally, scholars use the term containment as a metaphor to explain how we use language to name and then diminish a threat. I'm interested in how doctors, policymakers, and all of us communicate about menstruation in a way that treats the body as a literal container for menstrual matter, like how a tampon seals the body to keep menstrual blood from escaping. This is one example. Female doctors who taught women's university PE classes in the early 1900s saw their white students as the future mothers of the race. So they taught them specialized exercise routines meant to ease menstrual pain and lighten menstrual flow, strengthening the body to bear, quote, robust white babies. And while white women were doing military-esque training, the menstrual health of black women wasn't even considered, as they were seen as unfit for motherhood. My research demonstrates what histories of menstrual containment can teach us about our current political moment. The overturning of Roe versus Wade is a stark reminder that reproductive surveillance begins with menstrual containment. So the stakes of menstrual politics have never been higher. They are crucial to looming concerns about health and medical inequity and the gendered and raced dimensions of bodily autonomy. Thank you.